Babalik tayo dito sa Kababayan today. You're in for a very special treat. Here's an exclusive clip of Delano Manangs. I got the ability to make you think I'm funny. You girls might think I'm ugly, but you talk to me for a couple hours. I'm... <laughs> huh? How about that? <laughs> Larry Itliong was one of the few Filipinos to buck the system and get married, and not just once, but four times. A veteran of the fishing canneries, railroads, and farm labor, he emerged as a leader organizing Filipino workers from Alaska to California. Larry Itliong is... Uh... Grew up hair with the mustache and seven fingers, we call him, because he had only seven. He smoked all the time with his cigar, you know, in his mouth. Very brave, tough. My father was very strong verbally, very strong mentally, and very strong physically. He would stand up to anybody and stand up for anybody. I'm going to be very frank with you. I have all kinds of guts, you know. I'm not scared of nobody. And I'm a son of a bitch in terms of fighting for the rights of Filipinos in this country. The Filipino workers led a lot of strikes, by the way, now, in, in the Salinas area, and in Santa Maria, and, and in Stockton. They were known to be militant. They were old school. They were confrontational. You've got incidences where growers are getting shot at, where scab workers are getting beat up, Vehicles being destroyed, barns being burned down. The workers uh, got their increase that they demanded. The problem was that they didn't sign any contract. It didn't matter how much you struck. We could always get more money, but we'd never get a contract. How many hours we're going to work in one day? Overtime pay? Maybe a work rule where after 100 degrees, it could slow down a little bit. That's what you get in a contract. The Monong spent the 1930s, 40s, and 50s working the crop cycle and fighting for a few cents more each season. By 1960, they were older men, and the biggest battle of their lives was about to begin in Delano, California. Delano was the Wild West, a small town divided by the train tracks and Highway 99. The farm workers on one side and the powerful growers on the other. Delano had a different dynamic than the other places. There was a lot of local Filipinos working with a lot of the local Mexicans, and a lot of these people knew each other. The Filipino community was pretty good size, you know, and they call it Chinatown. Why? I have no idea why they call it Chinatown instead of Filipino town, but uh, pool halls and, and uh, poker places and uh, other things. <laughs> Though Mexicans and Filipinos socialized in town, in the fields, it was a different story. Well, in Delano, the girls would keep uh, the, the crews separate, and they worked in the same fields, but not integrated. You had the Filipino crews over here, and you had the Mexican crews. The unions were also divided along ethnic lines. Mexican workers were led by Cesar Chavez, and Dolores Huerta. Larry Itliong organized the Filipinos. Larry Itliong came to my camp. He told me that he is organizing Filipinos to go on strike because we needed to have better wages. For the first three months that I was leaving, all I did was talk, talk, talk. I got home, I got home at 11, 12, 1 o'clock. But let me tell you, my mouth was sore. We just want to thank our director who's here, the director of Delano Manong's, Marissa Arroy. Marissa, thank you so much for coming to Kababayan today, for sharing your passion. And I hope that me, along with all the audience that's watching, uh, will be able to see more of your work because you really have a voice that you need to bring out there to the rest of the world. Uh, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, G, for the support. I really appreciate it. All right, we'll have Marissa back here on Kababayan today to talk about her other documentary, Little Manila. Uh, wag po kayo nga alis, magbabalik pa po tayo dito sa Kababayan today.